Welcome, I'm Sarah and in this short video I would like to give you some exercises for outer hip stability. A lot of the times these exercises will help with SI joint issues. That's the joint that is your sacrum, the big flat bone at the end of your spine that you can touch back here and how it connects to your hip bones. A lot of the times, uh, for women especially, and especially uh, during pregnancy or after pregnancy, this joint will feel a little bit unstable because of the hormones that our bodies release to help us open our pelvis for childbirth. Um, and so what you have to do is try and create some strength and some stability in the outer hips. So today we're gonna do both. We're gonna do some exercises for strengthening and some exercises for stretching. The way that I'm gonna do the video is more like a sampler as of what the options are for you to practice. And then depending on what works better for you, then you can choose those exercises and on your own do as many counts and repetitions of each exercise as you find helpful. So we'll start first on our side. So if you have bony hips like I tend to do, sometimes it's nice to have a little blanket that you can put under your pelvis as you lay over to the side. And you want the hips to be perpendicular to the floor. So you don't want to be laying back and you don't want to be laying forward. You want to be hip bone over hip bone. The bottom leg is bent, the top leg is straight. This head can be on your hip or it could be on the floor. You are going to just lift the leg as high as you can and you should try and keep your spine steady. So what you do not want to do is you don't want this. This is not the exercise because what that's doing is, is this is spinal uh, flexion, um, extension. Anyway, um, you want to keep the spine steady and just go straight up and you'll feel the burning here on the side of the hip. You do as many as you can before the outer hip actually cramps. So you want a little bit of a burn because that's what's strengthening the muscle. But you don't want to get to the point of cramping because then that's going to trigger some other like tendon, Golgi tendon reactions and stuff and it won't be helpful. So listen to your body as to how many repetitions you could do. The next variation of this is with the knee bent. You just go up and down, up and down. What you do not want here is you do not want to open up the hip like that. It's not the hip that's opening. The hips stay even. It's just the outer hip working here. It's a tiny little triangle shaped muscle out here that will eventually begin to burn. So you can do this as many times as you like on either side. The other option is basically the same movement but in a different direction related to gravity. So you come onto all fours and once again you lift the leg up and once again it's not the hips that move, that's easy, that's your spine twisting. You keep your spine steady and it's just the leg. Just the leg goes up and down. Whenever you do this one, you want to balance the movement by doing a few of these, which is going to strengthen your buttock as well. Inhale, stretch the spine, point the toes, lengthen, look up. Exhale, wrap. Inhale, exhale. And the other set that I find very helpful is the same action standing up, which you just come up and you can either take your hands to a table or a desk, or like I'm gonna do now, at a wall. And you're gonna go out first, we'll go back, just once again, strengthening the glute. You do as many of these as is comfortable, and then you go out to the side as well. 
trying to not send the leg back. So that's not the movement. It's just straight out to the side. And once again, you do as many of those, somewhere between like seven to 20 repetitions on each side, depending on when the muscles begin to burn a little bit before they cramp. Then you have to stretch all of that. And when you stretch, you want to stretch the front and the back. So, find a blanket and sit on the blanket. And one of my favorite stretches for opening up this outer hip is a variation of Marichyasana 1, where the foot comes up and over and across the straight leg, and you twist. If this is available, then you can bend this bottom leg, and that's gonna get a little bit of a different spot. If this is still available, you can do Gomukhasana with one knee on top of the other and then go forward and that's going to stretch out here as well. Same thing on the other side, of course. If this is not available to you, you can always do this pose from all fours. So what you do is you come onto all fours and you take one knee behind the other and you lean back. That's basically the same position that I was just in, except in a different direction towards gravity. And then of course you wanna stretch the inside, the front of the pelvis, the inner legs. And there's two poses that I really like for that. First is Parakonasana, so also the feet together, knees apart. That's gonna give you a nice stretch. You might also feel that on the outer hips as well. Um, if that's not available or if it's uncomfortable, you can first try moving the feet away or just straightening the legs and trying to get a stretch here. This is not really gonna stretch your pelvis as much as your inner legs and hamstrings, but it will be helpful as well. And last but not least is some leg exercises. So you come to lay on your back, you hook the strap over one foot, and at first you're going to stretch the hamstring a little bit, the leg, the calf muscle. Then you're going to go out to the side and stretch the inner leg a little bit and the groin. That'll feel really good. But the one that's really going to stretch the outer hip is to go over and across. So same leg, but different hip and then go over and across, and you're gonna feel this all the way through your lower back and outer hip. If this is a little too intense, you could always bend the knee. You could even just forget the strap, bend the knee, and just switch. I'll do this on the other side so that you can see clearly. You take the strap, first you hold here, then you go out to the side, and then you go over and across. You switch hands, and go over and across, and you're gonna feel it all the way through here, if this is too much, bend the knee and just use your hand to push the knee down so that you get a nice stretch through your lower back. One thing that's actually very useful and very helpful when you have low back pain and SI joint instability is to, for your Shavasana, take a chair or a stool. You could do this over a coffee table and you just lay down, send your calf muscles up over your bench, and lay down, and Shavasana. So I know I went through this rather quickly, but this is not meant to be an exercise video, it's more of an informational video to just get you thinking in a certain way as of what exercises might be helpful to create outer hip stability so that you can ease some of that SI joint pain. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Sarah. Please visit my website, Sarah Yoga and Wellness. Namaste.